Welcome everyone to FRS Digital Events, where we invite successful and inspiring speakers from the business world to tell their career story. In today's event, we are exploring careers in the food and drink industry. My name is Kath, and I work to connect teachers and their students with inspirational people from the world of work so that young people can get a better idea of what careers may suit them. I will be hosting today's session. Participants, your audio, video and chat function has been disabled for safeguarding purposes. If you are submitting questions, can you click the anonymous button? If we're unable to answer your question today, I do apologise in advance, but we do have them recorded and we will try and get back with answers. We're also recording the session and you'll be able to watch again later on YouTube and please feel free to share it with your friends. So for now, sit back and enjoy the webinar, take some notes and get ready to ask some questions. I am delighted to welcome two inspiring entrepreneurs, Lucinda Briscardine, founder of Genius Foods, and Sue Stewart, owner of the Four Seasons Hotel in Perthshire. Lucinda and Sue, thank you both for giving your time today and for agreeing to share your story. So Lucinda, can I ask you to start by telling us about your career journey and what you have done since leaving school up until now? Okay, well, thank you. It's lovely to be here and good to meet you all um, over, over the online, um, over this, this whole wonderful setup that FRFs have put in place. Um, so um, I have quite an interesting sort of circuitous uh, sort of career journey, really. Uh, at school, I always counted biology, chemistry, art and English as my favourite subjects, um, as I love science, writing and creating things. Um, I went on to study physiology at university, which is all about how the human body works, covering how each of the organs work and how they interact with each other. And I particularly enjoyed learning about the immune system, as many of my family have allergies, um, and also the digestive system and nutrition, uh, because I, I love food and I love health. Um, and both of those are very, very closely linked. Um, after graduating from university, I enrolled in a cookery course. Uh, while well, I considered what career I wanted to pursue, because I wasn't really quite sure. Uh, it turned out that this was the beginning of my career in the food industry, and I've never looked back. Uh, my love of science, food, health and writing has opened the doors to many areas in food. Uh, I ran a catering company and worked as a chef um, at a Michelin star restaurant in London. Um, I've written three books on the science of food and ingredients. Uh, two of my books explain how, how to cook delicious food for people with food allergies and on the gluten-free diet. And developing the recipes for these books enabled me to figure out how to blend gluten-free ingredients to create the structure and taste of mainstream bread, rolls, other staple bakery foods for my son and for other people like him. And I'll be telling you a little bit about my son in a moment. Inventing food, particularly gluten-free food, is all about chemistry, physics, biology, and creativity. And inventing fresh gluten-free bread in my kitchen at home has led me to founding my business, Genius Foods, now the UK's favorite brand and gluten-free bakery. So what inspired me uh, to choose this particular career path? Well, I always wanted to run my own business as I come from a family of entrepreneurs who used to run big catering companies and hotels in London. Um, and my business, was, I, my business idea was born when my son was diagnosed with an intolerance to the protein gluten, which is found in wheat, barley and rye. And he'd been losing a lot of weight and feeling really ill every time he ate cakes, bread, biscuits, pizza, um, which, which was very badly wrong. So I took him to the doctor and they said, take him off gluten. And when I looked for tasty gluten-free alternatives uh, to his favourite foods, I realised there was none available in the shops. All of the bread that was available at the time, which was the food we missed the most, was very long, it was very dry, very crumbly, and lasted for nine months at a time, so it wasn't really bread. <coughs> so um, this realisation made me realise I'd discovered a gap in the market. And with my background in science and as a chef, I felt inspired to find a way to develop soft, fresh and delicious gluten-free bread for my son and for all the other people like him who became ill when they ate wheat. And this was a challenging task. When you mix wheat flour and water together, you get a thick, stretchy dough. And when you make wheat bread, 
thanks to the gluten, that thick stretchiness of the dough, the yeast that you add to, to, to a mixture to make bread makes bubbles and, and makes that stretchy wheat dough double in size. And because gluten is protein, that bubbly dough then sets in the oven uh, to create a lovely soft springy bread that we all, we all eat every day, um, many times a day. However, when there's no gluten in the flour, adding water to it makes a soup uh, rather than the dough. And, and that soup then bakes to a hard brick. And if you try and slice that hard brick, it just crumbles into bits. And that's what the bread was like at the time. And the challenge was to turn this gluten-free hard brick into soft, bubbly, springy, chewy bread. So that's really how it all started. Um, and, it's been, and it's been a very interesting journey um, with many successes and many failures. Um, I succeeded in launching my bread in supermarkets across the nation in 2009. And 11 years later, Genius sells over 35 products around the world and employs 300 people in our offices and bakeries. But it hasn't been an easy journey. When you, when you do something new, it's never easy. It took me two years of work at home to develop bread, a, a bread that my children thought was delicious. I made thousands of the most disgusting, terrible loaves that would either um, be like a rock or I couldn't actually get them out of the oven because they were stre so, so stretchy. Um, and I'd sleep with a notepad next to my bed, wondering how on earth I was going to turn my rocks um, into normal bread. It took another year to successfully scale my Magi Mix recipe, a two kilo recipe in my kitchen, to 200 kilo mixes in the bakery. And some of the bread we made was, was just as terrible as the bread that I made in the kitchen. Um, but I learned to trust my instinct that I would find a way, which gave me the strength to keep going. I also learned how to persuade the bakery team to keep working alongside me when so often we made terrible bread. If you believe in something strongly and it makes your heart sink, sing, not sink, sing, think very seriously about building your career around it. Loving and believing in your work will give you an excellent chance of success and fulfillment. At Genius, we make millions of loaves a month, every minute of every day of the year. And it's very difficult to imitate the, glue, the gluey, stretchy consistency of gluten for all the reasons I've just mentioned. Um, um, and, and it's the gluten that forms the, the lovely layers and the croissant and the, the spongy texture of the cake and the bubbly texture of bread. And we have to use lots and lots of ingredients from all over the world to do that. So we use psyllium husk from India, we use tapioca starch and bamboo fibre from Vietnam, and sometimes these ingredients change slightly from batch to batch, and this can cause the bread to turn back into those rocks or be so stretchy we can't get them out of the oven. And sometimes this bread gets packed and reaches our consumers, and this is a huge failure on our part, as our consumers who rely on Genius Bread for sandwiches and toast deserve the best quality every time they buy it. So, what it, so, so you probably gathered that what we do as a company is quite important. People like my son get very ill when they eat foods containing wheat and gluten as it inflames their gut. They have a condition called celiac disease. Other people are allergic to wheat or choose to avoid it because they suffer from conditions such as ADHD, from eczema, uh, from migraines, brain fog, and just feel better without it. People, some people just feel more energetic eating less wheat, particularly if they do a lot of sport. And in fact, 25% of the UK population have to or choose to live on a gluten-free diet. And Genius makes it easy for all these people to eat gluten-free snacks and meals all through the day. I feel very proud to have developed gluten-free bakery products for people who desperately need them all around the world. There's nothing more fulfilling than talking to our consumers and particularly children who are so excited to be able to eat sandwiches and cakes again with their friends and feel well afterwards. And our products change lives. And most of all, I enjoy making a difference to people. I also love the challenge of creating the recipes and the manufacturing processes to make them at scale as they often are the first gluten-free products available on the market in the world. We were the first to take bread, rolls, croissant and baguette to market and we call ourselves structural engineers at Genius, inventing products from scratch, giving
gives me a real kick. So finally, um, I've learned many skills during my career. I've learned so much about the science behind food we make at home and the food that we manufacture at scale in the bakery, particularly the chemistry and physics of food and also engineering design required for our manufacturing equipment. I've also developed my writing skills for writing articles for newspapers and magazines and for our packaging and website, communicating with our consumers in a way that they find relevant and trust is essential for our brand's success. As we all sell our products all over the world, it has been wonderful to improve my languages and work alongside people in different countries. Feeling comfortable working closely with people from all backgrounds is key to teamwork. More generally, I've learned to welcome challenges rather than feel daunted by them. If you can calmly solve a problem, you will learn a great deal through the process and be in a stronger position to achieve uh, and to solve the next challenge that comes along. And finally, don't worry if you don't know exactly want, what you want to do when you're older. Do your best in everything you do, try new things, take up opportunities that come your way, create your own opportunities, and don't be afraid to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone. That's, the, that's, that's how you learn. The more activities you expose yourself to, the more likely you will find your niche and the career you really enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucinda. What an amazing story, marvellous achievement, and the fact that you were able to do something for your own family, as well as a load of other people. I can't imagine life without bread, so <laughs> thank you <laughs> for <pleasure>. that. <laughs> okay, um, Sue, so, uh, you have your own hotel with an yes. award-winning restaurant, which employs a, a lot of people within the, the food and drink industry. And I know with your, your background in venues, you, you have been involved in this industry, um, maybe not as directly um, as Lucinda has. So how did you get to own your own hotel? Please start by telling us how, what your, your journey was and how you ended up being so successful. Um, well, I started off when I was very young that I decided I wanted a hotel. That was going to be my ambition. Um, but if I go back even just a little bit before that, my memories, some of my earliest memories are of standing on a chair um, with my mother when she was baking cakes. And it's not something I think that happens necessarily very much these days, but I would sit and stand on the chair and help her make a chocolate sponge and I'd get to lick the bowl with the chocolate sponge mix, which was some of my favourite activities when I was little. Um, so yes, I liked food when I was little and that's how I figured I sort of wanted to be in the hospitality world. Um, and you know, going on and joining brownies and guides, I was always the person who had my cake making, my cooking badge, all those sort of things. And I'm pretty sure Lucinda was probably the same herself. Um, and as I grew up a little bit in my teenage years, we then encountered some friends of the family who bought a hotel themselves. And that's what exposed me to the hospitality industry in full. And I stood there and watched them. And I thought, I can do that. I can do that. So it made me feel good thinking I could do those things. And that's how I decided to get into the hotel industry. And I went off and did hospitality management. And even at my interview to go to college to do hospitality, I was the one who sat there and said, I want to have my own hotel one day. And I think um, I worked very, very hard, as I'm sure Lucinda has. And you know, it's a case of when you realize how hard you work, you probably decide you want to work for yourself rather than for someone else, want to reap the benefits of working hard yourself. And that's how I decided that ultimately I wanted to buy a property myself. Um, but the journey there doesn't start early. It takes a long time to get to that point. And I was very fortunate that um, I opened the Sheraton in Edinburgh um, a number of years back. So I got a very good grounding with the, uh, one of the big chains such as Sheraton and then worked for Intercontinental Hotels as well before um, being down in London and working on the special events scene. And the food side of things changes a little bit when you go into the event side. It becomes all very exciting um, and it's all about being creative. So you have artists coming in to, to play, to do all special event food. So it's very exciting. You get to be very creative then. Um, 
whereas my skill set is more on the business management side. It was interesting to hear Lucinda was uh, very much a, a science focused person. I would say I am to some degree as well. I'm more maths perhaps than the pure sciences. But coming with the financial acumen, you know, your maths takes you to finance, takes you to business. And if you want to run your own business, you need to be able to understand the figures and run with the figures and keep them up to date and work with them. And when there becomes a challenge, you need to be able to fix it as well. So that's how I, I moved through the initial hotel side of things, learning best practice, learning how to do things at ground level and then moved into the special events scene and that's where I was running my own consultancy down in London with a lot of the unusual venues. So I was very privileged um, to be involved with some of the big special events um, at places like the Natural History Museum and Kew Gardens and also being able to open special venues where they were doing some of the big awards dinners. That's where you get to rub shoulders with all the big celebrities. So you know, food can take you in many different directions as we've seen. And if you want to travel the world, food is a good way to do it. Um, you can, as Lucinda was talking about, being able to purchase products from all over the world. It might be even though your 40 is um, finance, you can do accountancy through hotels and you're still involved with the food side of things there. So there's lots of different opportunities. Um, one of the things of having bought the hotel here, I have to say, Lucinda, we do stock your genius food here. We do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <It's> very important. <laughs> um, and the last thing that we want to find ourselves in a position is not having vegetarian and not having gluten-free products. So it's incredibly important in a small hotel business to have those items here. Um, so we do make sure we stop and we do make sure that we cater for different dietary requirements. And it's in a small property, it's about being different. Um, so it's important to look at having a very good creative chef who's prepared to try and push the boundaries a little bit on what they're doing. Um, sometimes I need to push them a little bit. Um, sometimes they push me. So it's a, a good working team philosophy between the two of us or three of us or four of us, depending on how many is in the kitchen at a time. Um, being in a hotel, uh, it's very different, I think, to many, many other industries. Um, my days are never the same. I used to have nails, but then I bought a hotel and I no longer have nails because some days, although it's a hospitality business, I can be fixing the boiler, I can be making beds, I can be doing housekeeping, or I can be in reception, or I can be involved with the food and beverage side of things. Um, we're very lucky being in Perthshire um, here at Loch Iron because we have an abundance of fantastic food on our doorstep. And I'm very lucky that we've got some artisan producers very close by, um, award-winning cheese manufacturers. Um, we've also got sourdough manufacturers that are not far from us as well. And it's great to have these unusual items as part of our stock here. Um, one of the things that I'm looking to also do here in the hotel, because I've only had it three years, I'm still what's considered a relatively new owner, is I'm looking to develop part of the building into a farm shop, Delicatessen, to diversify our offering, which in a current climate like this is a very useful thing to do to diversify and reduce and spread your risk. So introducing a farm shop is perhaps in some ways going a little bit back to my roots in some respects. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops over the next year or two. And I'm really looking forward to doing something a little bit different to that. Um, so that's sort of how I've got here. I think, as I say, it's doing things differently. Um, no two days are the same. Um, we have lots of different challenges in this industry because we're dealing with people. We're not dealing with machines. So that's what makes it really, really interesting. And I think um, one of the important things for me is that everybody in the team is singing from the same hymn sheet and they're, they're all working together as a team. If I see somebody's having a tough day, they're just maybe got at the wrong side of bed or they're just not feeling up to it. It's important to make sure that that person 
is lifted a little bit by me. I make sure I try and give them a big hug, make sure that they're ticking along okay. And that way we as a team can do and deliver the best that we can do. Um, so that's what I try and aim to do. And I hope that um, the way I develop the hotel going forward with the farm shop will make all the difference and that I'll be able to stay here for quite a few years yet. So I hope that is a little bit of an insight into the hotel world. It's not the big chains. Small independent properties are very, very different. So I will say thank you, Kath, yep. and back to you. Thank you, Sue. Right. We do have some questions coming in. Um, they are not particularly addressed to someone, but I think the first one I shall pass your way, Lucinda, because I think it was directed at you. Um, you mentioned that you sold your products in countries all over the world. And the question is, what countries do you sell in and do you employ people there? Yes, we do both actually. We sell our products in Scandinavia, in France, Germany, Holland, Middle East, Australia, uh, America. Um, so we are pretty well spread. And what we found, it's been really important to have uh, people who understand the market representing us in those different countries because people want different products and business is done differently. The retailers work in different ways. So it's really important to have people on the ground in those countries who can, who can represent Genius really well. So we have an office in France and in Germany, and we have an, uh, we have an office in Australia, and we have distributors in America um, and in other, uh, other areas. So there are lots of different ways of going about, um, about working abroad. We also export everything we make uh, from Scotland, from our bakery in Edinburgh. So we make everything there and we export frozen, uh, frozen bread all the way to Australia wow. and to America where it's defrosted on shelf. So it's quite a big job. The supply chain element is very, very interesting. Okay, this one I think I'm going to pass to you, Sue, because I suspect you will have been slightly more affected. And um, we have a question: How has your business changed since coronavirus? How has it changed? Yeah. It stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, hotels have been very badly hit, uh, and some hotels are and restaurants, pubs, um, they've taken the route of going down the takeaway and the delivery option. Um, sadly, I wrote my car off the week before we went into close down, so I don't have a car here and I'm the only person in the hotel that drives. So going down the route of deliveries and takeaways wasn't really an option for me. Um, so I did try the takeaway option, but we, our local community is an elderly community. So there are a lot of them are over 70. So a lot of these people didn't want to come out of their homes because they were isolating. Mm -hmm. um, so the situation at the moment is that we are not trading. My staff are furloughed, um, but that's one of the reasons why my mind has actually been able to go back to my original business plan and start to really investigate the opportunities of opening the farm shop. Um, yeah. That was part of the original plan and that's what I'm doing now. Good, so you're not wasting your time. <laughs> no, I'm oh, still as busy. I get a long line in the morning, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so this one, either of you can take it up or it's, I guess it's just a short answer from both of you. Do you work long hours? Um, I, yes, yes, yes. I was going to say you're having to think yes. about that, <laughs> well, no, well, I, well, yes, I think you have to work long hours when you're trying, when you're creating something from scratch and, and the way you work over the, over the, the, the lifetime of your business does actually change. So although I now get my eight hours of sleep a night, um, there were, I, I work pretty hard during the day. And um, when I first started Genius, I was working way into the night and not getting nearly enough sleep. Um, but somehow, the thing I do think is really important to get across is if you put effort into things, it always pays off. Even if it pays off in a way you never expected it, it always pays off. Okay, Sue? I'm right, guessing... The question was, do you work right, long right, hours? Okay. If you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. 
and therefore it doesn't feel like long hours. Yeah. I've always wanted to be in the hospitality industry. And since I actually started my own business, all my friends have said to me how much better I look, how much healthier I look. And I'm thriving on it because it's what I've always wanted to do. So, yes, under normal circumstances outside COVID, I'm usually down at my desk here at about quarter to eight in the morning. Um, I open up and then I lock up at night. I'm the last person to lock up the building at night which can be anything from 10 o'clock through till about one o'clock in the morning. But it just depends how busy we are. I don't work throughout all that time. I do go and walk my dog and get some time off in the afternoon. But I really can't stress that if you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. okay. That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Lucinda, then, would you recommend someone starting a business? Um, I would recommend that uh, someone starts a business. Uh, back to Sue's point, if you really feel passionate about what you want to do, um, you, you really do need to feel passionate. I was absolutely determined to find a way to create a, a great tasting gluten-free bread because there simply wasn't anything on the market. I wanted to develop it for my son because he was missing out. Um, you know, he couldn't eat a sandwich, he couldn't go to a party, he couldn't take a packed lunch to school. That made me really sad. And I could also see that it was a massive opportunity to do something that was actually really impactful and would make a big difference to lots of other people. And that is what, that is what has driven me through the long hours and through all of the challenges that we've had literally over the 14 years uh, during, during Virginia's journey. Um, so yes, you, you can only start a business if you really genuinely care about what you're trying to do. Okay. And uh, one for you, Sue, we have a young entrepreneur online and he is asking how much money would you have to invest to start a cafe or restaurant? And I'm kind of guessing the answer is, different depending on the premises? It does, but. yes. Um, it does depend on whether you want to rent a cafe or whether you want to buy something. Um, sometimes it's a case, of course, that you can get other people to invest in you. Uh, and that might be something Lucinda is more involved with. You know, talented chefs are very good at getting uh, investors to come along and open up restaurants for them. Or that certainly has been the case in the past, and I'm sure it will return to that in the future um, after we've overcome COVID. So it's sometimes it's about figuring out how much money you've got um, or have got access to and then maybe taking the first step into a cafe and then move it up to the next step, being a bar or a restaurant before moving up the tree. Um, so it, there's different ways to do it, yes, depending on what you want. But it, it's checking out also the feasibility of it. So the idea sometimes people have of spending their day maybe making cakes and serving coffee, they need to make the sums add up at the end of the day to make it worth their while. And does it pay the bills? Okay, good, thank you. Um, Lucinda, one for you. Did you have a mentor to help guide you in your journey? Yes, I've been very lucky to have lots of un uncles that have run businesses that I really look up to. Uh, I have friends who've done incredibly well who I also, you know, have asked lots of advice from. Um, but also our, our chairman, our first chairman, uh, Sybil Gamble, um, was an investor. He, he, he was a founding investor in Genius. He, he looked at the bread that I developed and um, said, my goodness, this will change my life. I'm a celiac. I'd like to invest behind you. And he, he is a very, very um, experienced businessman. And he's been extremely supportive uh, throughout the journey of Genius. Um, I think it does make a huge difference if you can turn to people when you when you have a question. Yeah. Okay. And I think we've only got time for one last question. Uh, unfortunately, we've got quite a few unanswered, so I might ask your assistance after <laughs> uh, the the session's finished. Um, but I'll pass it over to you, Sue. Then just it is a careers talk, and this person is asking, what is the last role you recruited for? Um, the, the last role that I recruited a member of staff into my team for. Yeah. 
Um, the last role was my head chef, actually. Um, so yes, I recruited a head chef back in February with the view to opening this season. Um, so that's what I did. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. And thank you both um, for your very interesting and insightful and engaging discussion. Um, I'm you. sure thank I speak you. for everyone when I say to, it's been a great learning opportunity for us all. I um, also want to thank all the students at home that have joined us today and for the great questions that you asked. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to answer them all, but if I can get them answered afterwards, I'll um, get them emailed out to everybody that's attended. You will also be emailed a feedback survey. Please complete this so that we can continue to improve our F4S digital services. And if you look out for the recordings on our YouTube channel, uh, and if you aren't already following us, we are on Twitter and Instagram as well. And please share these with your friends and family. So our next online session focuses on preparing for interviews. And that is tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. And we hope to see you all there again. And thanks again, Lucinda and Sue. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much.